Ah, you know I love the smell of a mobile taco in the morning. The Mobile Taco Project. That's what's coming up next on El Cara Ham Radio. Hello, folks. This is Chris, KY4CKP. Well, this week we're going to introduce a new project that I'm working on, and that is moving my uh, radios from the Dodge Nitro that I've had for a good long time over to a 2020 Toyota Tacoma TRD off-road truck. So this is going to be the Mobile Taco Project. And uh, we're going to use uh, a, a fair amount of the kind of techniques and materials we use on my wife's 2020 uh, Forerunner. And so this won't be as long of a series as that one was because you'll already have seen uh, or can go and look at that series and see some of the things we did. But we're going to show some of the things we're doing, the way we're going to solve a few of the problems and work on getting my... HF radio and my UHF VHF radio, the FT891 and the uh, ICOM ID5100 installed into the truck. So uh, one of the first things, uh, of course, I had to do was to start removing things out of the uh, nitro, uh, pulled the radios out, worked on getting the antennas removed. Um, and then also, as we can see here coming up, uh, had to pull some wires, <laughs> had to pull some wires, some wire harnesses out of the nitro that I had installed, the power leads coming from the battery into the main compartment and different things like that, the uh, remote control head wires to control the head units of the radios. So uh, a pretty good bundle of wires that I had to pull out of various places of, uh, of the nitro. So we've got those removed. Uh, we're pretty much ready to go on the install and then I had to start thinking about well what was I going to do as far as installing uh, these the radios into this this new truck uh, I want to do it very similar to what we do with my wife's vehicle I want to do it uh, as neat and clean as we can um, and uh, so again we we did some similar things to solve some of the same problems you know that we had with with the install for her vehicle so one of the first things i did is uh similar to, to her vehicle is i bought a accessory mount for the uh, tacoma now unfortunately rago manufacturing uh, fabrication they don't make uh, one at least not right now for the tacoma so i found another company that makes a very nice unit um, it's not inexpensive but uh, I think you can agree it gives a very nice clean look, uh, look to it and it also uh, mounts very sturdy and you can definitely mount some things to it. This is from Expedition Essentials, Expedition Essentials, and this is their 3TPAM, third generation Toyota powered accessory mount. Very nice, clean install, has the two USB ports if you want or need them. And so I went with this unit, uh, I think it matches the, uh, the central dash part there very nicely. And again, it has plenty of strength in the overall installation of it. So we're going to start taking a look at how we mounted the head units and the main units of the radios uh, in the next section. So we'll bring you folks right back. All right, folks, here we can see a preview of the final mounting for the head units for these two radios. Uh, we'll go into sort of how I came up with the solution and what the solution looks like here in just a moment. It uh, looks very clean, very nice, and should work very well for these radios. I've had it mounted for a while and uh, uh, been driving around in the truck and everything, and it, it sounds seems to be a very secure mount without a lot of bouncing and flex and stuff to it, which is why I went with that largest size RAM mount to begin with, just to make sure. Uh, it had plenty of weight carrying capacity, but I want to make sure it wasn't going to flex all that much. And then here's also a preview of how I... Uh, was looking at mounting the the main bodies to the radios uh, i did change the position around just a little bit but it ended up being very similar to this and so we'll see that again uh, towards the uh, later half of uh, the video build so it's working out uh, nicely i've still got some work to do some wiring uh, to run but uh, the mounting for the head units the mounting for the main body of the radios i've got those all figured out and they should work uh, very nicely 
and again it's just going to be routing some cabling very similar to what we did in my wife's forerunner uh, i can i should be able to run i've got everything on the driver's side of the truck i should be able to run everything through the uh the sills the door sills just like we showed you on the passenger side of my wife's car and it should keep all the wires pretty well hidden should keep it all very nice and neat and organized uh, and uh, just a very clean installation for this so uh, again uh, just a quick preview for the uh, head unit mounts and the uh, the main body mounts uh, and so we'll go ahead and take a look uh, here as we keep going uh, this is kind of the uh, final positioning for the radio mounts and again we'll uh, we'll kind of see a little bit more on this uh, at the uh, second half of the video towards the end using that automatic power on automatic power off unit apo3 start your vehicle the vhf hf radio will come on automatically shut your vehicle off it will automatically shut off within just a, a few minutes typically so i just want to preview a little bit of the hardware i used uh, i used the self -tap tapping screws half inch length uh, the board i bought is half inch and made sure they weren't going to go all the way through and that stuff but the board's very strong. The plastic is very strong. So these work very nicely. You could use a regular type screw, certainly, for this. I drilled pilot holes anyway. So uh, they didn't really need to be self-tapping. It's just what I had. And then I also bought some of these socket head cap screws. The um, M410-50. Uh, these work perfectly. The threads work perfectly uh, for both the radios, the bodies of the radios, to attach them uh, in, the, in the brackets they had. I had mis misplaced some of the hardware for that, so I just bought these to attach the radios. And also, almost everything else is going to end up using uh, hex keys to, to work with it. Now, when it came to mounting the head units, uh, I thought for a long time, and I actually did just a lot of sort of visual searching on Amazon for the kind of bracket I wanted to use. I knew I could drill holes in things as I needed them. And I knew that with the head unit for the ID5100, it has magnets on the back. And so it can be magnetically mounted to a, you know, to a steel uh, plate or something. Uh, especially if you had a little ledge there on the bottom. And then the uh, FT891 head unit has a single uh, mounting hole in the center. So I just looked at a whole bunch of different uh, steel brackets on Amazon, and I saw these triangular ones, and I said, well, it's got the, uh, it's got the little angled ledge part at the bottom that the 5100 head could sit on, and then it's steel, so the magnets will hold it. That should work pretty well. It's got that hole towards the top. Uh, I looked at my measurements and said, well, it looks like it should be tall enough to uh, nicely hold both these units. It's, it should be heavy uh, duty enough to hold them. And I should have that single mounting hole for the FT891. Uh, and sure enough, uh, they weren't very expensive. So I ordered a set. I think it was two or four that came in. And that top hole works out nicely to hold the FT891. I put in some foam there just to help uh, handle any vibrations. And that ledge and the, the magnets hold the FT891. Uh, or the ID5100 uh, hand unit is fine. This has been in my truck now for um, a couple of weeks, I guess. I haven't done, I think I think it was actually on there when I did uh, off-roading not too long ago. Uh, it seems to be holding just fine. That heavy-duty um, mount from Ram mounts, their largest size balls and arms, I think it's the C, uh, the C size, uh, is working out great. So this, uh, I put up the, um, the Ram ball mount, uh, marked the holes on it, and simply drilled them out and use some hardware to uh, to mount that and the head units on the front stand off a little bit so there was plenty of room for uh, I, I cut the, the screws to length with a dremel and and put some nuts on there and, and so the mounting for the that ball unit worked out just fine and there's uh, uh they're, they're not that close to the the backs of the head units there's no 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 issues with it uh, rubbing or scraping or anything so that part was pretty easy to do just just marked it with a sharpie and and uh, just drilled through it. It's pretty soft steel, and uh, and just went through that. Now I thought about tapping that uh, for a, for a screw or something. Uh, I just ended up not not bothering. I had some screws that were plenty long, and so I just thought it was a little faster. Just drill it, and I had the uh, nuts and I had the clearance. If I'd had less clearance, I, I might have gone ahead and tapped it because I do have a tap and die set. Here you can see that we've got the the ball mount mounted. It's very secure. Uh, and the uh, the thickness of those uh, C balls and arms uh, and the weight limits they can hold, uh, they appear to be holding those two hand units just fine. There's a little bit of weight there with the bracket, but again, that extra heavy duty size is uh, seems to be working out fine. So that's the solution we came up with for the head units, and I think it ends up with a nice clean look, has them uh, uh, in a nicely accessible position there in the cab when you're sitting in the driver's seat. And you can even kind of loosen the ball and let it lay down relatively flat. And it uh, doesn't block very much of your vision at all. It's not bad when it's up. 
But if somebody else is driving the vehicle or you just don't need the radios accessible, you can lay them flat and get just a little bit of that visibility back. So here we can see they're mounted. There's the foam in the center. That'll just help, you know, mitigate any any uh, vibrations and things. The, the arm does a pretty good job. And you've got full access to the buttons on the top edge of the FT891. And, of course, the uh, ID5100 has a touchscreen and, and the buttons and things are, are easily accessible from the front. And here you can just see that heavy-duty uh, ram mount uh, attached to the ball and the arm and the, um, the mount that will go to the dash mount uh, that's in the truck. So this solution seemed to work out very nicely. Uh, you know, you just never know when you're doing this stuff. Uh, these brackets may not have worked out. I may have had to order some other ones, but it did work out, so that's nice. And it, it, nothing, none of that was really all that expensive. You know, the RAM mounts aren't all that cheap, but they, they are very nicely engineered. They're very strong. So sometimes you get what you pay for. The dash mount's not inexpensive, but again, to me it was a case of it looks really nice and it's working really well. So I, th I thought that was worth putting some money into. Um, and then those, bra those brackets though, they, they were pretty cheap. I think it was, you know, 15 bucks for uh, two or four. I forget how many was in that pack. And if I hadn't used them here, I probably would have figured out somewhere else to use them, uh, some other project down the road. So the handy unit parts pretty well worked out. Now we've got the radios. Well, the radios are pretty simple. Uh, I decided to go with a pretty similar solution to what we did in my wife's forerunner using that heavy duty plastic. Uh, I got another 12 by 24 inch board, but instead of a full inch thick, I just got the half inch. For this application, I didn't really feel like I needed these, the extra strength of the full inch. These radios are lighter, the weight's more spread out, and so I didn't think uh, bowing or bending was going to be much of an issue. But it, again, it's UV resistant and it's water resistant, so it's not like regular plywood or something that could you know degrade and stuff over time. You see I mounted the brackets with five, you know, five uh, of the screws. I want to make a nice heavy-duty mount because, again, I do uh, want to do some at least light to moderate off-roading and just, you know, going camping and things. And I also put the radios in. I angled the brackets so they're pointing sort of uphill, if you will, towards the top. This is, board is going to be standing vertical in the storage space behind the, uh, the driver's side, uh, you know, rear seat. And I also mounted the head units uh, or the base units so they're angled up in the bracket. So you, they're lifted up uh, on the front off that board a little bit more just to make them a little bit more visible because the back ends of these units is where you would do most of your fiddling. Um, there's not that much on the front. And then, of course, you can see the automatic power on off device, the APO3 uh, mounted right there next to the ID5100 base. So that's pretty much it for part one. We've got the main hardware mounted. Uh, now we just need to work on the antennas. And then we're also going to be working on the uh, you know, running the cables for power, the control wires for the head units, and, uh, and that kind of stuff. So that's pretty much it, folks. We'll wrap this one up, and we'll bring you right back. All right, folks, that's going to wrap it up for part one of the Tacoma mobile radio install uh, project. Join us for the next parts. There will be one, maybe two more parts uh, in this little series. And as always, we release videos every Friday. So we'll see you folks in the next video. This is Chris, KY4CKP for Lake Cumberland Amateur Radio Association, 73.